Welcome, Jarvis, to Metalladium Pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about, about Mike Demon, this new album, Outsider, and more things related to the metal world. And starting with a common question, how, how, how are you been doing this? No, no, no. I think this next question is a common one because the band delayed uh, more than well, like more than more, more like six years to release a new album. So, well, six years to release a new album because the last album that remains was released in 2017. So now the new album is 2023. So why the band delayed six years to release a new album? I mean, that's that's the the sim the simple answer is we were very busy. Do you know what we we didn't? It's when you ask the question, it sounds like we were doing anything, you know. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, you know. But the reality is, we toured on the Darkest Remains album for three years. We did three world tours. We did a live album in 2018, um, and in 2020, we had five seven-inch singles, and then a singles compilation in 2022. So there was new music coming out. There's just no full-length album. You know, mm. so um, but yeah, if you, if you look at it on paper, it kind of looks like there's this big gap, you know, so we were releasing new songs. We were writing the whole time we were recording. This is an album that we recorded during the first part of the pandemic. You know, um, we just wanted to get out and be able to tour off the stuff that we were doing before just releasing albums. I, I found that a lot of people that released full albums in the pandemic, they were forgotten about, you know, so yes, yes. we. <laughs> We're a live band. We have to go out and tour on the album. So that's the reason, you know? Yep. Um, okay, but, Sanders, so, come on, the next question goes to the, the, the single access because since since 2017, you released a full of singles. Welcome to the Night was released in 2017 and more singles in 2017 than 17, 18, 20, 21, 22, 23. There's a lot of singles before the albums. So why do you decide to release singles in a world that prefer a lot of full legs because I'm a I'm a I'm a mutant banger or head banger from the 80s and I prefer all the time the full full length but just singles. Yeah, I mean I think the reason is that we were kind of writing a lot of different styles of material for us and the songs we were writing didn't really work together on an album. They were so different from each other, you know? I mean there were some that sound like classic rock, some that sound like thrash, yeah. you know? Uh, some that are like speed metal, some that are like more punk, you know? So it's like, we thought each of the songs deserved their own treatment and their own cover art and their own release, you know? And plus we were going, we were recording with a different producer for every, and a different studio for every song, you know? Like we, okay. we went to Denmark and recorded uh, Kill the Pain with Fleming Rasmussen. We went to Chicago and recorded Are You Out There with Steve Albini. We went to LA and recorded Empire's Fall with Matt Hyde. You know, so it's like we we were going all these different places and just kind of had this dream list of producers that we wanted to work with. And it was easy for us to say, hey, if, hey, you want to do one song? And they were like, sure. You know, like <laughs> it was a bit, bit more difficult when it was like, you know, to lock those guys down for three months of their lives, you know. So it was cool. It was a good, cool experiment. Yeah. Oh, well, nice, nice, nice. So into this, into this aspect of the world, I saw that the Night Demon is a band that grow up very fast. Because you are now with Century, now with Century Media, then you are, then you was with Steam Hammer, but you released your first EP in 2012 by yourself. Then a lot of uh, a lot of underground labels like Rain Rain Records, Shadow Kingdom Records, Night Demon Records, High Roller Records. A lot of underground labels released this your first EP because I think how why what do you how do you take this what accomplish because Night Demon is relative a new band because. Compared with the all a lot of uh, a lot of heavy metal bands from the eighties and seventies, you're a new band. But but you're a new band, but you are at a great level. Steve Hammer, Century Media. You are with Nikki with uh, Breaking the Law uh, promotions. So you have a lot of attention for the media. Well, I mean that's really good. Big compliment. Thank you. You know it's funny. Like it sometimes it takes somebody on the outside to look at your career and tell you that. Because for me, you know, when you're in it, you're always thinking like, man, what's the next step? Like, oh, I wish there was more attention on us or I wish, you know, look, it's funny that you say that. So that's good. That makes me appreciate this a lot more, you know. Um, but I think, you know, we made a good our first EP was really good, you know, and I think it was it was fresh. It was it was what was needed at the time. We were just a, in the right place at the right time. And I think that got a lot of attention. Plus, 
we were touring so much, man. I mean, like, like we, we, we did everything we could to be on the road all the time. And I think that gained us a reputation of being a hardworking band. And I think that bigger companies want to work with bands like that, you know, and it's, it's, it's a different world right it, now than it was. And it's before, you know, uh, um, record companies had the money to say, okay, I want to, we want to build something. Let's find somebody and, let's take the time and the money and make them as best as, as good as they can be. And let's grow them over the next decade. You know, these days there's not a money from to do that. So the record labels are always looking for talent that is already doing fine on their own. Right. So they could kind of just bring them in and either like, jump on what they have or help them get to a, another level you know you know depends how you look at it but that's kind of the thing and that's my advice to any bands out there that have any aspiration to work with any kind of record companies or anything like that is just do it on your own do it on your own they will come to you and then you can decide when they come to you if you really if it's worth it for you or not because you know when you're when you have when you haven't built anything, you'll do anything to to do this stuff with the record companies, but they won't give you a good deal. But once they see you've done it on your own, then you have some bargaining power, you know. So I that's the thing. It's all DIY for us, you know. We we there's still so much we do on our own, you know. I mean, we're self managed, we're self booked, you know. I mean, we just we we we're working all day long on this stuff, you know. So yeah. Okay, okay, no, nice to hear. Well, doing by yourself, it's, it's, it's a great thing because uh, but, uh, but the next question goes to, the, the, to this aspect. Well, now you are with the big labels, Steam Hammer, now with seems to me that one of the biggest ones around the metal war. So perhaps now Night Demon is not anymore an underground band. It's more like a mainstream band because it's usually co it's a usually common thing that they well, like the fans and reviewers say that it. When a band enters to the big labels, uh, Nuclear Blast, Century Media, Rod Runner, the, there's all these kind of bands are mainstream because the mainstream talks about the sell more CDs, sell more dates, etc., etc. Do you still consider it as an underground band? Because as you said, you're doing all by yourself, but at the same time, you are the big with the big with the big labels. Yeah, I think we're still underground. I do. And like all these, you know, all the labels that you mentioned started out as independent labels anyway. It's, you know, there they weren't majors to start with, you know. Um, and we're not played on any mainstream television or radio, you know. So, I mean, if we were, that'd be great. But like, we're not. So, and I can tell you by the venues we're playing too, we're still an underground band. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, and look, and like, I don't care either way. Like, you know, I, I think that we're just a band for what the people who like us, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But we're definitely underground in a, in a, um, in a way, in a, in the best way possible. Right. Like when I think underground, I think like people that are still down to earth, you know, Pe when I think mainstream, I think, there's a lot of good stuff in the mainstream, I think, and there's a lot of good people there, but mostly you think about it in a manufactured fake way, you know, and hopefully one day we can be in between that in a good spot in between the two where, you know, you want to be mainstream just for exposure. You want people to know who you are and like it, you know, that's it. Um, but at the end of the day, we like what we do and our fans like what we do and it's totally worth it. It's a good life, you know, mm -hmm. No, great, great to know. Great to know that you consider all we have as underground yet. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, I'm talk talking about the when well, talking about the, the you said the one thing in your previous answers that the band in in all the singles mix punk, hard rock, an alternative. I I, I didn't know that little alternative aspects. And I when I hear this outsider, for me it's the same because I'm trying to say in some songs you're playing like more more modern stuff like alternatives from the 90s and more modern stuff into the rock then you play punk then you play heavy metal so you are a lot of textures mixtures into there so for for me it's, perhaps it's more easily because i have i, I have experience he hearing music since the since the 80s but for the new yeah. people from the new people it's very difficult to understand oh hey these bands compared with the, the, well, for the with bands from the 10 years ago no 
no no 80s no 90s because you some problems from the other other times so into this aspect what how do you describe the music into the night demon is a heavy metal band or perhaps you say that more like a metal band with a lot of textures I can't, it's so I it's so hard now like I I think that we we were always kind of lumped into the scene of new wave of traditional heavy metal you know and we'll kind of forever be known in that I guess from the people that know us and that's fine but I just I don't know how to classify it now I would say if you ask me I will always say we're a heavy metal band our t-shirts say heavy metal like we're that's what we are but have i think heavy metal is just an attitude you know it's who we are it's like lemmy always said motorhead was a rock and roll band you know he had that rock and roll attitude you know i mean we grew up in i mean we're 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 in the punk scene we're in the heavy metal scene but we were definitely more metal so i night demon is a heavy metal band that's all i could say and if you listen to it like i mean If there's some, if it crosses over into some other styles, I think that's good, you know. I, um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't start to try and categorize us into any other scene because I just, I, I think it would just confuse people, you know. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. There's a lot of confusion, especially for me, as I said when you said, and and I and I hear an outsider, this new outsider, you have a lot of different styles. It's very difficult for me. Just you are more like the metal band than the heavy metal or new traditional new wave metal because it would try to it would there's so many genres right of metal it's like it's like i don't know i don't i don't really want to be a part of any of them just call it metal yes call much it much better to say you are a metal band than the heavy metal trash metal because you have a lot a lot of styles into this last just, album especially when i hear the feel the, the sound obsidian you have a, a touch from from punk part very very in very very lean down to the punk area but If, if if some people can, love Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, they know they they know hear punk into their their songs. <laughs> This very well, kind of like like if you look at a band's career as they evolve, it's like you know if you listen to the first Night Demon records, you'll say this is a heavy metal band, you know. So we still we're still that band. We still have that stuff. We're still gonna play those songs. That catalog exists. You know, it's kind of like saying is Metallica still a heavy metal band? I don't know, you know, like, but they, but if you had to describe them to somebody, you would say that, that they're a heavy metal band, you know, right? Even though some of the music they put out since is questionable heavy metal. I mean, it's definitely not heavy metal, like definitely not, you know, but they're still a heavy metal band, you know? Yeah, well, yeah in a way, yes, in a way, yeah. yes. So talking about this aspect, but now as as you can see, well, you are you are like a, like the, like the black sheep into this retro movement into the heavy metal traditional because I can a lot of bands from new bands, especially all new people, new people, new bands are playing like Judas Priest, like Angel, uh, Angel Witch, Saxon, <laughs> Iron Maiden, but you are different, as I said, you are different. So into this aspect, how do you see now this? a retro movement revival of the heavy metal or the traditional heavy metal because a lot of bands are playing it's very difficult to 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 see what's different because for me all the same like angel witch for me <laughs> uh, angel witch is one of my favorite bands of all time you know easily so um but you know look it, this is i love that there's younger bands playing like that are influenced by old school stuff, because I think that that's the best stuff, you know, to be, that's my personal opinion. Um, but what I think the approach that we take to be taken seriously is to, uh, to not copy this, this stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, I mean, you're, we're, if you listen to our records, I mean, we're obviously influenced by many things, you know? Um, but, the thing that I guess sets us apart as from some of the other younger bands, which I get it is that we don't adopt the whole aspect of it. Does that make sense? So like you, you, you can look at me right now, just physically see me and not go, Oh man, he's a heavy metal guy from the '80s. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I love the fashion, of course, of what it used to be. But I think a lot of the younger bands now they try and adopt the fashion, 
and kind of try and actually look like they're from 1984 or something. And it kind of makes it a novelty then. It puts them in that spot, which is they're never going to grow from that because you're 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 mimicking not only the sound, but the look and everything from the past. It's almost like a tribute to the past, which I think is cool. I like that. But it's not going to take you to a, the next level of anything brand new or anything unique. You know, I think that I love when 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 musicians can be unique and just be themselves, even if they're different. It's OK, because there's there's always room for you to be yourself. Yeah. There's plenty of young bands that sound amazing that can play way better than the old bands. It's crazy, you know, but they're copying such so they're they're trying to copy it so closely with the look and everything that you they they're not taken seriously is what i'm saying a lot of people would just go well just give me the original you know i'd rather listen to judas priest than this new band that sounds and looks just like them even yeah. though they're better you know they might <laughs> yeah, be better yeah, 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 yeah. You, know? yeah. you are you are you are you are you are you are the this is true that's true because i think like this I think like this because pref I prefer to hear Angel Witch because it's more more original and and like dress dressing original. But the same the band like today are in heavy metal in traditional heavy metal dressing like them. So it's the same, in the same right. in all in all aspects it's the same. So into this aspect, I always consider that rock or metal music is the music of people that they may age but keep the spirit young. So I listen to the latest records from the classic bands, and after decades, many of them manage to keep the energy of the into this record. So, but to be realistic, uh, nothing lasts forever for all bands. So, in your opinion, what do you think is going to happen when most classic bands that can perform in the stadiums will be retired? Do you think that there are younger bands, especially in your style with the traditional heavy metal, or heavy metal in general, that can carry the torch in that aspect? No, I I think I think that there are bands that are able to absolutely like I just said. There's bands that are young now that play and write better songs than the originators. Um, they do, you know, not all of them, but there's some of them, and they perform better too on stage, you know. So, but I think it's a problem with the media that we have right now. I think that you know. Um, the media keeps latching on to what's old to try and make money instead of trying to nurture what's new and put it out there for the people. So right now you have a huge gap between the top band of the old school and the top band of the new school. It's a big gap. Unless you're talking about bands that have a gimmick like Ghost or like band, you know what I'm saying? Where there's bands like kiss right like there's there's some newer bands that if you have a gimmick or an image or something if it's if you tie that into it you're a little more safe because it's more of a uh, of a cartoon show that you can rely on versus just your music and who you are you know we live in a society where nobody wants to idolize anybody if they know their face, you know, they have their own social media every day. You don't want to be, there's a, we live in a society where people are more crude and they're mean to each other versus celebrating another's success. You know, they're not happy to see other people succeed if they're not, that's a generalization. But what I'm saying is I feel that if the media, like the magazines, the radio, um, television doesn't start, putting the new bands on the covers of their magazines and playing them on the radio and pumping them up the good it's good stuff you know obviously but if they don't start doing that more then what we're going to see is when the old bands die they're just going to be watered down versions of them like tribute bands will be the headliners or or bands that have i mean you're seeing it now already you know foreigner has one original member and he doesn't even he's not even with the band the whole time you know, you have bands, you have bands that are Riot 5, you know, which I think they're great. I love those guys personally. But the reality is, is there's no original members of the band, but the songs are great and they're they're still writing good songs, you know, but that's what people want to hear because there's no there hasn't been an, the media hasn't championed a new Riot, you know. So, um, you know, I mean, that's. That's the way I see it. I see it'll it'll be a guy and a, it'll be a 
kiss with one with one member or zero members it'd be iron maiden uh, i don't know if iron maiden would do that but you know what i'm saying like do, yeah, yeah, do you yeah. get sorry that was kind of answer, but um th that's i if if there's not more attention given to the the newer bands that are good um then that's how i see it happening it's going to be a tribute band of the, what's old and it'll just all fall apart you know mm -hmm. Okay, it's interesting that you say this because um, I'm really thinking about. Well, you are a fan of music. That's you created Night Demon. You have you played in other projects like City Ungo. But uh, into this aspect, so for you, what what means as a fan of music? What means for you as a a reunite band band like the Pantera play just two two members the original first lineup or all other bands play just win one. Or two original bands and do tours, or like like I like like I see uh, that that to all without Chuck Soldiner, or per <laughs> or perhaps right. a, a Dio tour without Dio with a just and a three D version from them from him. Right. I mean, look, we're living. We this is good. This is not a new trend. I mean, if you can go right now and see a group like the Drifters or the Platters, I'm talking about bands that were around in the '50s that yeah. definitely have zero original members you know um it's just the way that it is i think with you know we're we're kind of if you look at the history of the world it's, it's millions of years old right but we are just in we're like 100 years into like the era of recorded music only you know like something like <laughs> 100 years maybe a little longer you know but uh, i don't know exactly but something like this so we're seeing how this works now and i think if if there's a good song people are going to want to hear it and if there's a brand people are going to want to see that brand in any form right so we're in an interesting part you know of of this history and and it's it's exciting to see what will happen i believe it's kind of like the wild west anything can happen but i do feel like music has become technology has made music a very cheap commodity you know and it's it's made it it's made it worthless and invaluable to what it takes to actually create it and release it um i think it's just it's made it's made it very accessible but it's made it cheap it's not worth anything anymore uh, for as on face value i think people it's worth something to people who really identify with the individuals in that are making it you know yeah yeah uh, yeah. yeah one thing that yeah. you said is well now the music is no no will work there's no will page for a lot of musicians now this is one thing uh, that you said but And into this comment, the last the last comment the commentary about the well from Nergal from Behemoth that he said in this new generation and uh, not to be a more and more or not to create bands, not to create musicians because they need more focus and uh different and uh, normal jobs because now the music is too saturated for all these bands or new bands to create, but because you you are in the big leagues with Night Demon, as I said, Sin Me, the Steam Hammer. But new bands doesn't have seem easy like you. So, what is your recommendation for the new bands trying to to do new metal or to do old stuff with new bands? I mean, look, I, you know, I actually know Nurgle personally, so I don't want to say anything bad about him. Maybe that was taken out of context. Um, I I don't know, but. And it's probably easy for him to say that because he's in a famous band and and makes a good living doing it and has a strong legacy. He's been doing it for a long time and he's dealt with a lot of struggles, a lot. Health struggles, career struggles. He's ridden the ebbs and flows of what a, a successful career is, you know. But I I think that that's the, the correct standpoint is to just, if, if somebody wants to do something in their lives, they need to do it. I mean, if it's who they are, if they're passionate about it, go for it. You know, um, if you, the, here's the thing, if something is not good, it's not going to take anything away from the stuff that's good. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like th there's, there's room for everybody in this world that if, if, If there's like 10 shitty bands and one good band, people are going to still spend the money and go see the good band. You know, um, I think it uh, goes back to what I was saying earlier. If you are unique, if you are you, you are yourself, then you have a shot. You have a chance and people can identify with you. You have a chance. If you're just going to go out there and be like everybody else, then then maybe don't do it. But we all have to start somewhere. Right. And we start 
learning other people's songs. We start copying other bands, you know? I've played in tribute bands before. It's a lot of fun, you know? Um, it's a lot of fun. It's great to learn from the masters, you know? Um, I used to think that Night Demon wasn't such an original band either, you know, for a long time. But I think naturally we've become one. And I can't really classify what it is. I don't know if we have our own identity or not, but we're always trying to push the boundaries of being, of finding ourselves. If, if, as long as you're in the search for who you are, then you're in the right lane. Mm, great, great to know, great to know. So, well, now returning to <laughs> returning to the, the new album because we are uh, we are uh, we are uh, went to the other side. So, into this aspect, into the other side, I mean, we're living. Uh, you are you're a band with a lot of singles, but. It's curious. It's curious as you as we spoke about the old days from the forties and fifties when the people well not listen to music with the jazz singles and and spread by singles at that time the forties and fifties. Now this the well this era are returning to now with the people generation of fourteen people well no to twenty twenty five years old people thirty years fifteen years they love to do the playlist with the. The playlist uh, with, uh, with what song, two songs from an album and a single, etc. So, into this aspect, which songs of this upside represent all concepts of this new album? Um, sorry, okay. The question was, what songs from Outsider represent the concept of the album? Yes, the, the it's music. the whole thing. Yes, the whole yes, thing. We, yes, yes. Yeah. It's a story from beginning to end. Yes. Yeah. Well, no. yeah. as I said. I I prefer to hear all music. But I'm okay. I'm old guy, but in the generation select just one song. So well, look, I mean, the songs were written metaphorically, so in a way where like you don't have. To, it's not like you can listen to song five and you're lost. You know, you can get a lot of different meaning out of this. They're not the lyrics are not literal. In the liner notes of the album, we wrote the whole story there, song by song, so you can you you know what the story is then you can read the lyrics on the other side of it, mm. right? But if you don't know the story, you're not going to listen to the album and get the story. You're not going to get it. Mm, yeah, okay. Well, for me, it's different. But talking about the 25, 25 years old people, they love to, they, they just hear the music by streaming services. When they, uh, when they, uh, that's the only way. So well, talking about other things about these, uh, well, not about these, the cover art, uh, perhaps, perhaps it's just me. But uh, but I'm related with this '80s vibe into the cover art because it's a green, a strong green, like a Stranger Things into there. So for you, what is exactly meaning of this cover art? Because I'm very interested for this '80s revival in cover art. Yeah, I mean we've always had that style art in all of our album covers. You can check, you can see that. Yeah, but yeah, um, yeah. it's um like. The story, in a nutshell, is about a man, young man who grows up. He's uh, working for his family uh, in a graveyard, <laughs> and he's in this strange town that's very small, where nobody can leave or nobody can come in, and he doesn't know why. Nobody really knows why, but he decides to leave the town, and he goes down this road and gets sucked into like a green mist, like smoke almost like the Northern Lights, but on the ground, and ends up in another dimension in the same town where he knows everybody, but they don't really know him. They're different people, you know? And he finds a different version of himself as well that he needs to, to kill and assume his identity. And he's trying to get back to his dimension the whole time. That's the story, in a Ooh. nutshell. Okay, yeah. okay. As I was talking yeah. about this album, so what are the future plans that the band has for this outsider? When you are a band like touring a lot, so perhaps you will, perhaps we, we will see Night Demon in this part of the world. So talking about Mexico, Latin America in general, because you have a lot of, a, a lot of chances to game here because, well, a lot of people likes your music. Yeah, so we'll be coming, we're going to do a US tour for one month when the album comes out. And then we're going to go to Japan. Then we're doing UK and Ireland. Um, we're going to do summer festivals in Europe. Um, into the fall, like early, uh, the month of September, we'll tour Europe. Then in November, we're going to come and play the uh, Monterey, uh, the Mexico Metal Fest in Monterey. Okay. Uh, in November. Um, and then we'll be coming down to South America to do probably a week of shows. Okay. So the November, you will start a hour. Okay. Okay. Nice to hear. Well, well um, 
talking about one of the last things of this interview, what is your opinion about the technology into the into the into the arts in general? Because as you can see, now there is a software that create art. You have put a little bit of description in the box, and this software or this artificial intelligence create art into the well, to a lot of, according to your description that put in the box. And with this aspect, a lot of musicians use artificial intelligence to create music, drum machines, bass machines, um, cable machines, and more machines into the, into the music. <laughs> so now, what should be the artificial intelligence are more present into the music industry in general? You know, it's very interesting. Like, I think it's fascinating, you know? Like, I, as much as I think that it's, it's hurting the music, it also helps it in the same way, you know? I mean... I don't think a band like Night Demon would have been discovered um, if it wasn't for the internet, you know? Um, but when you're talking about AI tools, yeah, it's pretty silly. But it's just fascinating to me that this stuff can be done, you know? Um, I think uh, it's causing the world to, as us as human beings, to rethink what our value is on this earth, you know? Like, when we're constantly being replaced, you know? <laughs> but... Um, it's interesting. It's just interesting to me. And I don't want to be like a dinosaur. I don't want to be somebody that says things should never change. And that's this, whatever happens new sucks. And, you know, it's just, it is what it is. You have to make the best out of it. And, you know, there's, like I said, there's a lot of good things about technology that makes the world, we're able to accomplish much more in a lifetime than we ever were, you know, that's for sure. So you just got to be grateful to be alive and, and use these things to your advantage, but also keep it real. I do think, okay, if you're talking about AI making music, um, I think at the end of the day, the only consumers for that will be other artificial intelligence beings. <laughs> it won't be human. You know what I'm saying? If that becomes the norm, then you know what's going to be impressive to humans again? Watching other human beings really do it, <laughs> you know? I'd be like, wow, I want to see that. I want to see really ta real talent. I want to see somebody sing in a room in front of me, you know? Like, really? that's, there. you can't replace that, you know? Okay, okay. Well, Jarvis, the sad times arrive at this interview. I hope you enjoy this one like me. You are a terrific guy to, to know. I hope someday we'll... Well, I will travel to Mexico Metal Fest this year to see yeah, my game also. November. So perhaps we want to add something to your Latin American fans that expect in Mexico and well, a lot of parts in Latin America and meet a little followers. Yeah, um... Look, we it's been a long time since we went to Mexico. We had a pretty big gap. We used to go there a lot, but we did come back to the Candelabrum Festival last year, and it was fucking awesome. And so we're it was really good for us to be back there, and we're looking forward to coming back this year. We're only playing that festival this year. It's the only show in Mexico that's per contract. We're only allowed to do the one show, but we'll be back uh, next year again too. So it's it's going to be an annual thing for us coming down there. We're super excited to do it so that's good okay oh and i have those putos 